Hello. In today's lab, we will discuss vectors and do experiments on adding vectors. Now tell me, what is a vector? You know from our discussions in the lecture, physical quantities can be classified mainly into vectors and scalars. A vector quantity has a magnitude and a direction where you know velocity of a moving object is a vector quantity. Displacement is a vector quantity. Displacement takes place from one position to another position. It has a distinct direction. Acceleration is a vector quantity. Can you give me another physical quantity which is a vector? which can be understood only by mentioning how much, in other words, the magnitude and the direction. Well, a very glaring example is a force. For example, if I tell you I apply a force on this paper, suppose I say, well, first of all, I don't think we have discussed force yet in our lectures. So, let me start by saying force is measured in a unit called Newton and we will represent that by the uppercase N. So, suppose I say I applied a force of 10 Newton on this paper. Now, did you understand what I did to this paper with that force? No, I don't think so, because the force can be in many forms. It can be a pulling force, a pushing force, a squeezing force, a tearing force. You see, the force can do many things depending on the direction in which the force is applied. So, in addition to talking about the magnitude, I, I gave you the magnitude of the force as 10 Newton. I also need to tell you the direction in which I applied the force. Then only you know what exactly I did with that force. So force is a vector quantity. Now, how do we represent a vector quantity? A vector quantity, there are two things you need to consider. The magnitude. Now. In order to represent the vector quantity, we will draw a line where the length of the line will be proportional to the magnitude. Suppose I say 1 Newton equal to, say, 5 centimeter and draw this line. Now, what is the length of the line that I just drew? The length of the line I just drew is 35 centimeter. And 1 Newton is 5 centimeter. Therefore, 35 centimeter will represent 7 Newton. You see? So, I have drawn a line which represents the magnitude of the vector, which is 7 Newton. And how do I represent the direction? Now look at the way I represent the direction. I use an arrow. But, that is not complete. You need to specify the direction of a vector by mentioning its angle. Now watch here. This is the positive x-axis. The positive x-axis. The direction of a vector is always the positive angle measured with the positive x-axis, this angle theta. So, I need to mention the magnitude and the direction for the description of a vector to be complete. Now tell me, is this the only place I can draw this vector? You see? Now, this line has the same length as this line, and as long as the angle remains the same, this 
and this represents the same vector. All right. So now you know how to represent the vector. Let me start with my normal description. I hope everybody has this lab printed out. Well, when you want to do a lab, always come with the printed, the printed lab worksheet. Now, what is the meaning of resultant of two vectors or two or more vectors? Now, let me see if I can show you one more vector here. Suppose this is one vector, 7 Newton, and I'm going to give you an angle, let's say the angle is 37 degrees. And I'm going to draw another vector here, which is a vector of 5 Newton. And the angle here, let's say, is 135 degrees. Now, that means I have two forces, a force of 7 Newton and a force of 5 Newton. Now, if this is the object, and if I apply on it two forces, one this way and one this way, you see, these two forces can be replaced by a single force, which is actually the sum of these forces. And that is what we call the resultant of these two vectors. The resultant. So what is the resultant of two vectors? The resultant of two or more vectors is the sum of the vectors. Now, can you add a vector like you add scalar? You see, when you add a vector, you not only are adding the magnitude, but also the direction. And that makes it very tricky, because you know that a vector of 5 Newton at an angle theta equal to 0, and another vector of magnitude 5 Newton, at an angle theta equal to 180 degrees, what do you get if you add these two vectors? Well, this is an example here. I'm applying 5 Newton to the right and 5 Newton to the left. Is that ring moving? No. These two vectors cancel each other. The sum of these two vectors is zero. So how do we find the sum of these two vectors or the resultant. In today's lab, we will discuss three ways to find the resultant of two or more vectors. One is the experimental method, which I'm going to help you set up. The second is the geometrical method. By drawing diagrams, you can measure the resultant. A third is the analytical method, that's what you did in the theory. I showed you how to break a vector into its x and y components. Let me see how many of you remember that. A 7 Newton at an angle 37 degrees. Can you write it in the component form? This can be written as 7 cos 37 degrees i plus 7 sine 37 degrees J. Is that right? Yes, I think I went out of the screen. I can write it this as 7 cos 37 degrees I plus 7 sine 37 degrees J. And that is vector 1. And vector 2 can be written as I let me make some space here. The vector 2 can be written as 5 cos 135 degrees i plus 5 sine 135 degrees j. Now, if you add these two, what do you get? Well, you have your calculator. Add this and let me know what you get. Well, once you have the vectors in the component form, you can add the x component. 
7, 5 cos 135 degrees I added to 7 cos 37 degrees I gives me negative 3.86 I and add the Y components 5 sine 135 J plus 7 sine 37 J is 3.27 J so adding these two vectors gives you this X component and this Y component can you draw that for me well I'm going to draw that here negative 3.86 well this is negative 3.86i plus 3.27j is this vector 3.27j and now you know that this vector 3.27j can be drawn here from the head of this vector so I can translate this you know that don't you as long as the magnitude and direction remains the same you can draw a vector anywhere so this is the vector 3.27j and what does the magnitude of these two vectors equal to to find the magnitude of the resultant draw a line from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector and this is the magnitude I'm going to call it R and what is the magnitude of that R equal to well using the Pythagorean theorem I have R squared equal to 3.27 squared plus 3.86 squared is that right and what does that give you let me work it out for you 3.27 squared plus 3.86 squared is 25.6 and that will give you R equal to approximately 5 Newton the magnitude of the resultant is 5 Newton and you also need to find the angle theta this angle theta and you know from our theory class theta equal to tan inverse of the y component divided by the x component in other words it is 3.27 divided by negative 3.86 tan inverse of 3.27 divided by negative 3.86 and what does that give you 3.27 divided by negative 3.86 gives me the angle is approximately negative 40 degrees well what to calculate to gives you is the angle in the fourth quadrant this angle is what the calculator gives you negative 40 degrees but you know that because the x component is negative and the y component is positive our vector r is a second quadrant vector and therefore the angle must be a second quadrant angle so how do we get from negative 40 to this angle theta you simply add 180 to negative 40 so that will be equal to negative 40 plus 180 that is 140 degrees so this theta is 140 degrees the resultant vector is magnitude 5 Newton angle 100 140 degrees is that right well that's the way we do analytically all right so I'm going to take you through the experimental geometrical I'm going to show you that and analytical now you know how to do the analytical before we get to the experiment, let me also explain to you what an equilibrant is. 
Suppose you have two vectors, vector A and vector B. Alright, do you have any idea what the resultant of this will look like? Well, the resultant, to find the resultant, to draw B from the head of A. There you are. Now, if you draw B there, join the tail of A to the head of B. Now, this is the resultant. Now, a vector that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction is called the equilibrand of these two vectors. So, this vector which is oppositely directed to the resultant and equal in magnitude. If this is the resultant, this will be the equilibrand. Tell me, what is the angle between the resultant and the equilibrand? It is 180 degrees. The equilibrand is a vector that will balance these two. If A and B are two forces, the equilibrand will be a force that will balance those two forces. Well, we are going to use this term in our experiment. Well, let me take you to the experiment and show you how a force table can be used to set up vectors. This is the force table that we are going to use to do the experiment. Now, what are the characteristics of the force table? If you look at this, Degrees are marked from 0, 10, 20, all the way to 360 degrees. So, this is your positive x-axis, is that right? In that case, that will be the negative x-axis. Well, y-axis and x-axis, you can measure the angle in any direction. And... Uh, we are going to use the pulleys. There are three pulleys. I can now use any number of pulleys. And we're going to use forces. Now, how are we going to create a force? A force is going to be created by hanging a mass. Now, if you look at this, this is a weight hanger. And the mass of this weight hanger is 100 grams. All right, now if you hang this mass using this pulley here and I uh, place the ring there, that means the ring is being pulled by a force equal to the weight of that 100 gram. Tell me what is the weight of a 100 gram? Anybody tell me? The weight of a 100 gram. We will discuss in our next lesson that weight of an object of mass M is M times G, where G is the acceleration due to gravity. What is the value of G? It's 9.8. So, if you have a mass M equal to 100 gram, remember always use kilogram. So, 100 gram is 0.1 kilogram. What is therefore the weight of 100 gram? It will be weight I'm going to call W. W equal to mg. M is 0.1 kilogram multiplied by 9.8 meters meter per second square so let me write it that way 0.1 kilogram multiplied by 9.8 meter per second squared and that will be 0.98 kilogram meter per second squared and that is what we call a neutron the weight of 100 gram is 0.98 Newton. Now here I have a mass of 200 gram. You know the weight hanger is 100 gram. 
another 100 and I can measure the weight using this spring scale. Well, what is the weight of this? It will be 1.96 Newton. The weight of 200 gram is 0.2 times 9.8, which will be 1.96 Newton. So, we are going to use, we are going to suspend these masses using strings so as to get force vectors. All right? Okay, let's uh, set up the force board. Let's now look at activity one. Set up the force board. Now, I hang a 100 gram mass corresponding to zero degrees. I have done that. This is the 100 gram mass hung corresponding to zero degrees. And another 100 gram mass corresponding to 60 degrees. You can see that is 60 degrees there. And this is 100 gram. Hang a third mass to balance it. Now, how do you know that these two are balanced? Now, this is the test. This ring must be exactly at the middle of the black ring. You see the black ring there? It must be completely at the center, then it is balanced. So, in order to do that, I'm going to take this third piece of string and pull it in such a way. Now, look at the way I'm changing my direction to get that ring exactly at the center there. That means the balancing force must be around, look at this, 210 degrees. So, I'm going to move a third pulley at that direction, 210 degrees. And then I'm going to hang a third weight hanger. Let me get hold of a weight hanger there. Now, I'm going to use this weight hanger over there. You think it will balance it at that angle? What do you think? Well, let me first of all hang it there. There it is. It is not balancing. Now, if I pull on it, you can see the direction seems to be all right. I think I need to alter the direction slightly. All right. The direction seems to be all right. There you are. I'm getting it at the center. Maybe I need to change a bit more the direction. There you go. Now, what I need to do is use some loose masses. I've got a number of loose masses here. Now, look at those. I have a 100 gram. A 50 gram, I hope you can see the readings on this. Another 50 gram, a 20 gram, and so on. So I'm going to try a 50 so that the total is now 150. Is not enough? I'm going to try one more 50 to make it 200. That's gone too far, right? So, I don't want that. I'm going to put a 20, another 20. Well, that's a 20, that's not quite enough. How about a 10? That is a little too much. Maybe what I need is a 5. Let me see if I can find the five. Now, I have a number of uh, change here. These are all five grams. I have two grams, one grams. So I'm going to try a five and see how that goes. Well, it looks pretty balanced. Is that right? Yes. Now, uh, probably I can use a one gram. Let me see if I can find a one gram. Well, that's a two gram. Let's see how that's going to work. I think it works perfect. 
It is balanced perfectly. Now, how much do I have all together now? How, what is the mass now balancing it? All right, let me remove all this. Okay. And I'm going to take this and count it. So you need to count it. How much is the total mass now? That's a hundred. That's a fifty. That's a twenty. And a five. And a two. So now I'm not going to add it for you. Add all those masses. And that is the mass that balances. You need to convert that to weight and make it into newtons. In other words, well, let me do that for you. That will be 177, is that right? 150, 177, that is 0.177 kilogram. And multiply that with 9.8. And that is the force that balances. Now, what do you call that balancing force? That is your equilibrium. And therefore, how do you obtain the resultant? Remember, the resultant will have the same magnitude, which you just calculated, but exactly opposite in direction. The direction of the the, the direction of the equilibrium, this is the equilibrium, is 210 degrees. Therefore, the direction of the resultant will be, what do you do to get the direction of the resultant? Subtract 180 from it. So, 210 minus 180 is 30 degrees. So, the resultant of these two vectors is the magnitude you just calculated. How much is that? That is 0.177 times 9.8 is 1.73 Newton. So the equilibrium is 1.73 Newton at 210 degrees. The resultant is 1.73 Newton at 210 minus 180. That is 30 degrees. Now this is how you obtain the resultant of two vectors experimentally. All right, let's now go and talk about how to do that geometrically. To use the geometrical method to find the resultant of vectors, I want you to have a protractor and a ruler. I had asked you in the introduction that you must have a protractor. I'm sure you can buy it from anywhere. A protractor and a ruler. Now, we are going to use two important laws in vectors so that we can add vectors using geometry. One is the triangle law. The triangle law. Now, what does the triangle law tell you? The triangle law tells you that if you draw two vectors, so that the second vector is drawn from the head of the first vector. If this is vector A and this is vector B, the resultant of these two vectors will be obtained by joining the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. Now, that means you have a triangle now. You got the resultant. Now, look at the way I'm going to define triangle law. You need to listen to this carefully to answer the questions in the worksheet. If two vectors are represented in magnitude and direction by the two sides of a triangle taken in order. Now look at the way I have looked, taken the order. Taken in order, then the third side of the triangle in the reverse order will give you the magnitude and direction of the vector. That is the triangle law. The second law is the parallelogram law. The parallelogram law. Now you know what a parallelogram is. Now you can draw these two vectors A and B from the same two points. Is that right? If this is vector A, 
and this is vector B, A and B. They are drawn in such a way that the tails are together. You see, unlike in the triangle where we drew the tail of the first vector from the head of the second the tail of the second vector on the head of the first vector. Here, the tails are together. And now, if you complete the parallelogram with these two as the adjacent sides, what all you need to do is draw a line parallel to this over here. Look at that. This line is parallel to that. And then draw a line parallel to this vector. You have a parallelogram there. And draw the diagonal of the parallelogram. And that will be the resultant R. And if you look at the triangle law and the parallelogram law, the resultant are exactly the same. Is that right? There are two different ways of stating the rules. So what does the parallelogram law tell you? It tells you that if two vectors represent the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram in magnitude and direction, then the diagonal of that parallelogram drawn from the point where the two vectors meet will represent the magnitude and direction of the resultant. Well, what happens if you have more than two vectors? When you have more than two vectors, you cannot use a triangle or a parallelogram. Suppose I give you these three vectors. Vector A, vector B, and vector C. Look at that. Vector A, vector B, and vector C. How do you add them geometrically? What we do is we extend the triangle law. Now watch me do that. First draw vector A. There you are. That is vector A. Then draw vector B from the head of vector A. Making sure that the angle is taken there. So vector B is there. That's vector B. All right. Now, I'm going to change my vector C slightly that way to make it easy for me to draw. Now, so the first vector, the second vector starts from the head of the first. Look at this. And the third vector C is going to be drawn in such a way that its tail will be at the head of the second. So draw vector C from here, making sure that, see, this is the x-axis. If this is the x-axis there, this is the negative angle C makes with the x-axis. You draw that angle there, and then draw the vector C there. That's the vector C. Let me draw that vector C. Well, that is the vector C. So, you've got vector A, vector B, vector C. To obtain the resultant, what all you need to do is draw the tail, join, uh, draw a line from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. And this is the resultant in magnitude and direction. You can measure the magnitude using your ruler. I will tell you what, how to do. And measure the angle made with the x-axis. That will give you the, the magnitude and direction of the resultant. So we will use the triangle law, the parallelogram law, or what do you call this law? This will be called the polygon law, polygon, many-sided figure, the polygon law. You're going to use one of these three or sometimes all the three to add vectors geometrically. 
Well, what I want you to do is take a piece of white paper and what are the vectors that we have now to add? All right, let's make a note of that. What are the vectors that we have to add now? We have a vector f1 equal to 0.98 Newton at an angle theta equal to 0 degrees. We got to add it to the vector f2 equal to 0.98 Newton at an angle theta equal to 0 degrees. So start by, start by drawing the x-axis. This is the x-axis. Now, first we got to take a scale because these vectors are too small. So what's the scale we are going to use? I'm going to suggest a scale. I'm going to say 1 Newton equal to 5 centimeter. You can, you can change the, the scale according to your uh, standards. 1 Newton equal to 5 centimeter. Therefore, how many centimeters will you draw for 0.98? So that will be 5 times 0.98 and that is 4.9 centimeter. So you will draw a line 4.9 centimeter at angle theta equal to 0 degrees and that will be your F1 equal to 0.98 Newton. Always label and a vector is always represented by the arrow. If you don't have the arrow, your diagram is not complete. And now, you need the second vector at an angle of 60 degrees, and knowing that this is your x-axis, measure an angle 60 degrees using your protractor, and draw a broken line along that 60 degrees. And then, Measure a distance of, again, 4.9 centimeter because your 0.98 Newton is 0.98 times 5. That is 4.9 centimeter. That is your F2 equal to 0.98 Newton. All right. So this is 4.9 centimeter. This also is 4.9 centimeter. And now... Draw the resultant, join the tail of the first vector with the tail of the second vector and measure that length. You see, I'm not drawing here according to scale, so I'm going to give you a figure which is not correct. Suppose I got this length as 7.2 centimeter. Well, you need to convert that to Newton using this. 1 Newton is 5 centimeter, therefore 7.2 centimeter will be, divide that 7.2 by 5, what do you get? 1.44 Newton. So you got the resultant 1.44 Newton, measure that angle and that will complete your geometrical analysis of these two vectors using the triangle law. All right? So on the paper, you must do like this. Draw your x-axis and do exactly what I showed you. Now, you got to now do this, the same vectors you have to add by drawing the parallelogram. All right, let me show you how you can do the parallelogram. We can keep the same scale. First of all, draw the first vector. What's the length of the first vector? 4.9 centimeter. So I'm drawing the first vector that is 4.9 centimeter. And draw the second vector, measure an angle of 60 degrees and draw the second vector also 4.9 centimeter. Now, we have now constructed the two adjacent sides of the parallelogram. Now, how do we complete the parallelogram? Well, you know that this is the x-axis. 
measure an angle of 60 degrees here at this point and draw a line and that will be parallel to this and then come over here and measure look at that I'm going to construct an x-axis there also you see that well you can now draw the parallel a line parallel to this over here and that can be done well there are several ways of doing that you can draw a vertical line well and that parallel line will complete the parallelogram is that right how do you get that parallel line if this angle is 60 degrees then this angle has to be 120 degrees so when you draw this line make sure that the angle with the the second vector is 120 degrees and that will be a parallel line to this and once you have the two parallel lines complete the diagonal and that will be your resultant measure the length of the diagonal and divide that length by 5 cm that will give you the magnitude of the resultant vector and then measure this angle that will be the angle of the resultant all right so you you did triangle law and parallelogram law i want to see both diagrams on the same paper and all these diagrams must be labeled and the results the resultant equal to say 1.44 newton at an angle theta equal to write all those neatly on that paper the triangle on the top parallelogram at the bottom okay and that's how you do this geometrically and then on the other side of the paper or in the report itself you got to show me how you do this analytically now how does that going to be done analytically well you know how to do that you've got to write f1 and f2 in the component form right like this f1 equal to 0.98 cos 0 degrees i plus 0.98 sine 0 degrees j the x component and the y component f2 equal to 0.98 cos 60 degrees i plus 0.98 sine 60 degrees J and therefore what is F1 plus F2 vector F1 plus vector F2 and those two what do you get 0 0.98 uh, cos 0 is 1 so that will be 0.98 plus 0.98 sine of 60 degrees will be 1.83i plus this is 0, 0.98 sine 0 is 0 and so 0 0.98 sine of 60 degrees is 0.85 so that is 1.83i plus 0.85j the magnitude of the resultant, I'm going to say, R equal to, if this is the X component and this is the Y component, what is the magnitude? Square root of X squared plus Y squared. And that will be square root of 1.83 squared plus point. 85 squared did I get it right no and that is 2.01 that will be 2.01 Newton and the angle theta equal to 
tan inverse of tan inverse of y over x 0.85 divided by 1.83 now when I'm doing this some of these numbers may be wrong I'm not I'm not testing my numbers so if these numbers are wrong you correct them all right because that number doesn't look very good what is tan inverse of tan inverse of 0.85 divided by 1.83 is 24.9 or 25 degrees so you get analytically the resultant is 2.01 Newton at an angle of 25 degrees now remember I'm only showing you the method how you must do this I'm not uh, this may not be accurate some of these numbers may not be right okay so you need to do this on your own now you we have now done experimentally using the force board geometrically and analytically okay now each of the experiments now when you repeat it I want you to do all the three now you might ask me how are we going to submit this electronically well I think most of you can get access to a scanner you can scan this paper and attach to the report or if you cannot access then make these drawings and put it in an envelope and mail it to me all right so that I will get it almost on time and email it to me that it is on is in the mail all right I hope that is clear okay well we used activities one two and three to find the resultant of two vectors which are the two vectors f1 equal to 0.98 Newton at 0 degrees f2 equal to 0.98 Newton at 60 degrees we did that experimentally geometrically we used triangle law and parallelogram law and analytically now I want you to repeat this process for three more experiments let's uh, go to activity four it says repeat activities one two and three for the following forces now I'm going to set up that on the force table for you and take note you got to uh, take note I will not I will not do any more of these on my own all right activity four number one 200 gram for F1 at an angle of 30 degrees so F1 this is a hundred gram here I'm going to now put another hundred on it there you are 200 grams for F1 at an angle of 30 degrees so I'm going to move the pulley so that this angle is 30 degrees okay and F2 is 150 gram I have a 100 gram in there already I'm going to put 150 at an angle of 120 degrees so I need to move this to 120 degrees there we are I need to put my glasses to do that okay there I have a 120 degrees and you need to find the resultant and look at the method I'm going to use again I'm going to pull it so that I get a balance there that means I know my direction of the resultant must be somewhere this way and I'm not going to measure it for you I'm I want you to measure it you can you can see the readings is that right now I'm going to put the third one over there and add masses to try and balance it okay let me see if I will show you these masses I'll take them up and show them to you I have a hundred a hundred and fifty well I need to adjust that position okay now all right 
I think it is pretty much balanced there. Is that right? It is pretty much balanced. So, you got uh, F1, F2, make a note of that, calculate them in Newtons and the angles. Now, this is the equilibrium, make a note of that, what is the angle? I want you to measure it. Now, can you see this reading? All right, and this will be there for what? You take your own reading, take that angle, and therefore, what will be the angle of the resultant? Subtract 180 from there. And how much is the magnitude? I'm going to pick it up and show it to you. The magnitude is, that is 50, that is 100, that's 150, it's 200, that's 250 gram. Now convert that to Newton. And now repeat all the three processes. We have just done the experimental. I want you to record the results of the experiment properly. And then do this geometrically and analytically. Let's now go to number two. 250 gram at an angle of 60 degrees. So there I have, this is 200 already, 250 gram at an angle of 60 degrees, there is the angle of 60 degrees. All right, and give me a second to fix it there. One of the legs of the force board is preventing me from doing that. But now, 300 gram at F2 equal to, well, I need to get 300 gram. I have 300 gram here, that is uh, the weight hanger plus now the two, and that has to be at an angle of 280 degrees. So I'm going to move this out to 280 degrees. So I need to move this away from here. Okay. Now. 280 degrees is here, okay, and this F2 is that force, okay, there you are. So I have F1 equal to 250 gram at 60 degrees. F2 equal to 300 gram, remember you need to convert that to newtons, at 280 degrees, and now let's find the resultant. Well, we need to first find the equilibrium. is that right? Well, you know that I did a mistake, let me correct that mistake. I'm going to transfer this onto this pulley, and move this pulley over here and I need to get 280 degrees for F2 there I have 280 degrees okay and now I need to find the equilibrium is that right? okay Well, to find the equilibrium, I first try like this, yes. So, the equilibrium of these two forces will be in that direction. And I'm going to bring my third pulley over here. Alright, somewhere here. And I'm going to add weights to that. And then I will make my adjustments. All right. Okay, let me add weights in there and see. Now. I think I need another weight hanger there. All right, I have a... I think I need to do a little adjustment, is that right? Yes, I need to move this uh, little 
so that the angle looks good. I think I'm blocking your view. Okay, there we are. And it looks almost balanced. This 100 gram I added maybe is a little too much. So I'm going to say 50, 20, 20, and that's not enough. I need to find some change. And the change I'm going to say a 10, how about a 10? I think that looks too much. So I'm going to do a 5. I think that looks just fine. Don't you think so? Well, use your judgment and just ask me if you have to. So, you have your F1 at an angle 60 degrees, your F2 at an angle 280 degrees. This is your equilibrium and read your angle there. Look at this, 140, 150, you read your angle and find the angle of the resultant calculate. Let me show you how much is the magnitude of the resultant. So make a note of that. I'm not going to add it together. 5 grams, 20 grams, 20 grams. 50 grams, 100 grams. So that's the total there. A hundred plus a fifty plus two twenties and a five. That is the magnitude of the resultant. Now calculate the resultant, the magnitude and the angle and do all the remaining. In other words, use the geometrical and analytical. Let's now do number three on activity 4. I need 200 gram at 0 degrees. I have done that. 200 gram at 0 degrees. Alright, I had a 250 there. I took away 50. I have a 200 grams at 0 degrees. 100 gram at 80 degrees. You see, I have it already set up here. I have 80 degrees, 100 gram and F3 equal to 250 gram, it's over here, at angle 170 degrees. Now, we need to find the equilibrium and then the resultant. Look at that, the equilibrium will be somewhere in that direction, you see that? So, I'm going to, I'm going to put a weight hanger there to find the equilibrium and that's too much I had 200 gram I took it away I got a hundred there let me now try a 50 well that 50 seems to be too much is that right so I need a 20 another 20 All right, I probably need a little adjustment on the angle there. Let me do that adjustment. Well, it looks pretty balanced. What do you think? So I have F1 equal to, it's a 200 grams at zero degrees. F2, I have 100 grams at 80 degrees. Well, it, this needs to be adjusted. So that means uh, I need a little, my F2 was a little off. Okay. F2 equal to 100 gram at 80 degrees. F3 equal to, is that 250 gram at 170 degrees? The equilibrium is, you can read the angle there, and the amount I have added is 140 gram. 140 gram. So the equilibrium is the force, the weight of 140 gram at this angle. And now obtain the resultant in magnitude and direction and use the polygon law.
not the triangle law or the parallelogram. Use the polygon law to obtain the resultant geometrically and use the resultant also analytically. All right. Let's now look at activity five. This activity is designed to learn about the components of a vector. Now, I have a mass of 200 gram over here. There it is. A mass of 200 gram at an angle of 210 degrees. I want to find the, this is the vector there, so I, you need to obtain that in Newton and its angle. Well, we need to obtain the x component and the y component. How do you do that? Well, what we need to do is add sufficient masses. Fix two pulleys, one at zero degrees and the other at 90 degrees. If this is the x component, this will be the y component. And add sufficient masses so that you have balance there. So, I'm going to add sufficient masses to get balance. Let's see. That will be a little tricky. Is that right? Well, let's see. Let's see how we can do that. I'm going to add sufficient masses here. Well, I think I have done maybe a lot of that. Well, I think I have a balance here now. I have uh, along the x-axis, I have 220 gram. We take a note of that. The, the force in the x-direction is 220, the weight of 220 gram. And the force along the y-direction is 140 gram. So that is 220 gram. And this is 140 gram. And this is your x component fx. Of course, convert that in newtons. And this is your fy. Well, I think this pretty much concludes the activities. Is that right? Now that all these activities are done, what is left for you is to complete all the work. In other words, each of the case, you have to give me the results for the experiment the result for geometrical calculations, analytical calculations, all those in an organized form, okay? And then answer all the questions and submit your worksheet. But as I said to you, if you cannot get these drawings scanned, just send these to me in an envelope and that will be fine. Even if it is a week late, that's okay. As long as I get them, I will be able to up update your grade whenever I receive them. But make sure that you do this. This is a very important lab. Once you do this lab and understand the process, you have really understood vectors. And you know, vectors are a very important part of physics. And in the second part of physics, we will be using this profusely. So you must develop a good understanding of vectors. All right? Okay, I will see you for next lab later on.